Hello everyone, welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie a hotspot grayling bug. Here on the vise I have this check nymph hook from Hanak. This is the H300BL in the size 14. The bead is black brass bead, 2.8 millimeters. To secure the bead and to add some weight to the fly, I'm going to add some 0.015 lead free wire. Make sure to get the lead free stuff. And here I want to make about nine turns or so. And then you can break off this end closest to the bead really close. And then going to add some glue, push it up inside the bead. And then for this pattern we can then break off the other end really close too. For other patterns I like to do um, a taper on it using a flat nose plier but on this one it's really not necessary. Then just a little bit more glue. To start this fly I'm going to use some flu pink thread from Textreen. This one is 8 dot, and this is to add the hot spot on the fly. So what I do is I start right behind uh, the wire, taking down a few turns of thread, then back up again, break off the tag, and then I'm going to grab some translucent nymph skin from Virtual Nymph. This one is the 3mm. I'm going to cut the end off at an angle. This way it's a lot easier to tie in and it makes for a tapered body. So, having the longer end facing down, I'm going to tie this in. And I want this to be right here, close to the wire. This way, it will have a nice transition from the one material to the other. And here you can really pull on this when you take it down. And I'm going to take it down quite a long way down in the band. And here you can really choose how long you want your fly. And then back up again. And here now what you want to do is to make a nice taper on this fly. Going down and up and down and up again. So I'll see you once this is finished. And then once you're done a nice taper, you don't have to be too neat about it at this time. The only thing we want is to have a little hot spot here at the end. So here what I'm going to do is to change thread to the uni A dot in tan. And I'm going to tie this in where we left the other thread. And what you want to do is to bind down the tag and the pink thread at the same time going down down we can cut these two off at the same time and here what you want to do is to continue the taper that you started you also want to have a gradient of color going from pink to some light or tan pink up to only tan here so here it's a lot more thread wraps to do You could also use 6 sort for all this process. I just don't have any 6 sort in tan. So I'm going with my 8 dot. It works really well. And then once you've done with this, just a few more turns. And here, see, so I don't think you can maybe see that we have a gradient going from this bright pink to some pinkish tan to tan. Then to add a little bit more to this gradient, I'm going to color the front or the part right behind the bead in some dark brown. And then I'm going to color just behind this dark brown with a little lighter brown. And this is only to do 
a nice gradient you won't barely see it but I know it's there so it it makes me happy and it makes for a nicer fly in my opinion and then you want to park your thread right behind the bead and we're going to start bringing up this nymph skin and for your first turns you really want to pull quite hard on this and we're going to make slightly overlapping turns this will make for a nice segmented body and also help with the taper and then once you reach the thread I'm going to tie this down with a few quite heavy turns you don't want this to come undone or else your whole body or abdomen will be ruined so a few quite heavy turns make sure it's really set and then cut this off really close a few more turns to tidy up and then we can whip finish with this 6 sort in 10 we don't need it anymore so tie this off cut off the thread and here you maybe can see but we have this nice gradient going from this bright pink to some dark brown in front. The natural caddis pupas don't really have a bright pink spot on them, but it's always nice to have like an attractor point or place that the fish can really target when it's going to, to grab your fly. But what the naturals have is darker back than belly. And this is to be camouflaged in the water. All small animals that are chased by predators usually have some sort of camouflage. And for these little nymphs, they have a darker back. So when you look from above, it's darker as, as the bottom of the river usually is quite dark with rocks and stone and sand. And when you look at it from underneath, you will see the bright sky above and this is why the belly is lighter and the back is darker so what I'm going to do here is to color the back in a darker color than the belly I'm going to grab the same dark brown marker that I use for the front and I'm just going to color the two first segments as you can see the two lost wraps here and I'm going to color this in dark brown then I'm going to switch over to a little lighter brown for the two next segments and I'm just going to color these exactly the same way and here you want to go a little bit up inside the last color this will blend these two together and makes for a really nice gradient And then I'm going to grab an even lighter brown and if you don't have all these different colors I only have these because I I also paint with them but if you don't have these you can just an easy way is to have just one colored marker uh, paint it uh, or color the back and then you can wipe off half of it with your finger and this will let um, the color from underneath uh, shine through more at the back or at the rear end of the fly than on the front so this is also a great way you can make this gradient or you could just not make a gradient at all and just make a plain plain dark brown back it also works really fine and then to set the color I'm going to lay down a thin coat of varnish all over and this will also make the back really shiny and buggy looking it also brings out the segmentation as well as the color so there we have the back and this here is starting to dry out just a little but if you leave it the time it sets you can see I have some slight holes here or but if you leave it to dry this will 
blend in together and make for a nice uniform surface on the fly. So there we have this gradient and now set it to dry. And once the body or the back of this abdomen is dry, we can then continue tying the fly. And I'm going to reattach the thread. And this time I'm using the nano silk from Samplefly 18 knot in beige. And this will really help me to finish off the fly the way I like to have them. I don't like to have a thread color in between the bead and the dubbing, so this really thin and strong thread helps me to achieve the look on the flies that I really like. Here you could go really fancy if you like to. You could add some CDC, some soft tackle, or some rubber legs, or anything that you like on your nymphs. But here I'm just going to grab a dubbing mix. This is some opossum in black, some opossum in natural brown, it's some horse ear, and it's some dark brown uh, UV ice dub. So I'm just going to do a quite small dubbing color on this fly. So what you want is to get just, just a few wraps and then right in front and you really don't need more than this. Then what I'm going to do is to apply just a little bit of glue onto the thread and then we finish. cut off the thread and here as you can see when you have this really thin thread it will sink down right behind the bead and it won't leave any thread here in between the dubbing and the bead and this is really how I like my flies or my flies with beads to look with the velcro we can then just brush out some of this dubbing to represent the legs but this is I think all you need on these type of flies, a hot spot, a nice segmented body and a, a little dubbing color. And if you would like your fly to go even deeper, you could put a tungsten bead on instead of this brass bead. And as I said, you could go really fancy with a lot of materials here uh, instead of this dubbing color. But this is how I like to tie it. So there we have the hot spot grilling bug. Thank you for liking and commenting. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time!